Oh, nothing like coming into the office today with the news that we're no longer allowed to eat at our desk. That's awesome. You're all probably thinking that's a weird thing, eating at your desk, but we've been doing it here for like 12 years now. Probably longer than that. Holy shit, she's cold out. Oh, you can really see my breath. Just kidding, that's vape. But yeah, so we're not allowed to eat food at our desks anymore. Reason being is the cleaners complained because they had to vacuum more than once a week. Because apparently, you know, vacuuming more than once a week, I guess it's a beyond their pay grade. I don't know. I don't know. Last time I checked, if you're employed as a cleaner, you're job is to clean. Well, anyway, I'm parked in the back 40, so I'm going to move my car over. I'm just on my 15-minute break right now, and um, I got a tickle in my throat. So it looks like all the uh, customer service agents in Cochrane just got laid off. They were given, um, like, due to the amount of time they worked, uh, they were, they had, like, what, six, no, four weeks off. So they were given their 60-day notice, but due to the holidays that they've uh, racked up, they're going to be leaving a little sooner, and fuck is this ever hard to do when you're cold. Like, they got us a little break room inside where we can go eat and stuff so it's not that big of a deal it's just pretty friggin lame that they change the rules when we only have a little bit of time left to work here like so it's obviously the cleaners that bitched us out because they're always complaining about my boss's desk how messy it is in there and how the vacuum really works overtime in there because the guy eats like a slob i guess i don't know so because of that we can't freaking eat at our desks anymore which is kind of annoying as frig doesn't affect some people because they go home for supper, but I don't like to go home for supper because I live on the other end of town. So like for frig's sakes, what the hell? Oh, well, one more year left and then I'll be done with this fucking job ran by morons. I'm telling you, they're all worried about that, about us eating at the desks, yet we still have areas with slow speed because we haven't fixed the bandwidth. Last time I checked, we're an internet service provider, not a damn cleaning company. Really? Is that the big deal? Eating at our desks? I got a better idea. How about uh, fix the fucking internet? Just saying. Or I don't know, even better. How about make the air not so black? You should see the vents upstairs. Oh my goodness. Almost willing to friggin' call somebody and have an air friggin' quality test done in this building just to retaliate, but no, nope, that's not my position. Fuck it. Soon we'll be out of here. Maybe my next job won't be as bad. Maybe it'll be better. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, back to the grind where I get my lungs polluted with black death. Probably asbestos. Yay! <laughs> Alrighty guys, welcome to lunch break. Oh frig yeah. Oh, I just heard a commercial on the radio that was kind of dicked. Uh, local insurance company, Blue Sky Insurance. They offer a rebate of 5% if you sign up for the thingamajig project. What they don't tell you is what the thingamajig is. <laughs> See, the thingamajig is actually a telemetry computer that you plug into your OBD port that records the last state of your car before a collision. And they can use said telemetry to see if you were speeding, if you were driving like an idiot and all that, and uh, use the information from it to not insure you in the case of a collision or an accident or whatever you want to call it. Now, I think that's kind of horseshit because 5% savings on a device that could generally just cock over your day big time you know you're probably thinking well how could it cock over your day well what if your car malfunctioned you know what if you had the uh freaking toyota pedal accident you know where she just locks up and brings you up to 120 kilometers an hour and feeds you to a tree just saying it's a possibility right and they would see it as you street racing because you rug the throttle now for somebody like me who's a fairly decent driver and you know i never had a collision ever and never made an insurance claim it probably wouldn't affect me much but uh for all new drivers out there uh the thingamajig could probably uh freak them over really good right so like who would opt for that who the frig in their right mind would opt for that i don't know but uh they don't explain it on this on the radio when you call them up they're like oh it's a little computer you plug into your thing and i'm like well what happens if uh, i get into a collision and that little computer thing is damaged and didn't record right or what not and they're like oh well then you wouldn't be covered oh okay so heaven forbid like mine is uh, that's why i don't have my obd bluetooth reader in because even though it's short and stubby i still tend to nick it with my left thigh, uh, thigh? no left shin that's better so because of that um yeah that's kind of stupid I don't really like that thingamajig idea. It's really bad. And they could just use anything like, well, you know, it was slippery out. Why were you doing the speed limit? Because that's the supposed to speed limit. And they're like, no, no, sorry, you're not covered. You got to pay everything out yourself. So great idea to give savings and a great idea to avoid paying out to people. I do say so myself. What do you guys think? Do you have insurance companies that offer a thingamajig that you jack into your car so it can record all the telemetry while you're driving and report back to them and say, hey, this guy's nuts. Uh, uh, don't insure him, he's a liability. You know, and they can also take that thingamajig at the end of the year and, uh, you know, see what you're doing. 
see where you've been because it probably records all GPS too. Uh, I don't, I don't really like that. Like, imagine if you're the kind of guy like me that you go out of town to go visit your buddies a lot, and when you hit the 400 and 401, you don't do the posted speed limit. You got her about 30 over a little bit sometimes, and um, they see that. They see, well, you're in a hundred zone and you're doing 130. Where was the fire? Uh, yeah, your rates are going up next year because now you're proven to be unreliable just sent like they could use that information to really screw you over so yeah you get five percent off the first year but that's it you know after that all of a sudden that five percent savings is now five percent extra that you got to pay because a couple trips you went over the speed limit or something they could they could use that couldn't they let me know if your uh, insurance places around there have a similar device because uh, I think it's horseshit, but I could actually see all insurance companies going that route, forcing people to install them so that they can not claim and just take our money and rob us blind. You know, it's almost like, why have insurance? Oh, because it's the freaking law in Canada to have insurance. That's right. You don't have insurance. It's a $15,000 fine. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Insurance, the most legal scam on the market. So legal, it's illegal not to have it. I love that kind. Alrighty guys, it's friggin' midnight, let's get the hell out of here and go home. This friggin' office pisses me off a lot of the times. So let's do this. Alrighty, I made it home safe and sound. I can't say that for a couple drivers out there. Driving down the highway, saw two cars in the ditch. So, uh, I slowed down to see if anybody was in them, and there was nobody in them, so I guess they bailed. I don't know. Bailed to find a tow truck, I guess. Maybe they didn't have a cell phone. I don't, I don't friggin' know. All I know is there was... A Cavalier and an older style Dodge Caravan, not the shuttlecraft style, the like really old boxy style from like 92, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of sucked for them, but uh, you know, I guess the uh, night shift plow guys just haven't gotten out there yet and started salting again because we're still getting dumped on out there. We're still getting a little bit of blowing snow and it's kind of kind of shitty, kind of uh, not fun, you know what I'm saying? And uh, had a little situation here at uh, the bottom of... Uh, the hill, just by my house, car behind me, and I'm stopped at the at the stop sign, ready to make my turn, and he's coming in pretty friggin' hot, hits the brakes, I noticed his RSN come out, so I was like, I'm not making a full stop, and I tried to jump the stop sign, the moment I did that, my tire started slipping, and my traction control turned on, and I was like, oh shit, and this guy's coming in like sideways on me now, luckily I was able to get the frig out of the way, the tire's finally hooked, man, like, <laughs> winter just started, and we're already having all these friggin' awesome shit, you know, what the hell's gonna happen later on down the road, son of a bitch, they really gotta get the salt out there, I don't like saying that, because salt just wrecks your car, but, you know, I'd rather have it slowly wreck my car than, you know, quickly wreck my car by slamming into a car. Right now I'm just heating up some grub. I'm going to go upstairs and eat because I didn't eat at work because there's, I don't want to eat in the lunchroom because that sucks and I'm, I don't have a computer to watch movies on and stuff. So, I'm going to eat now. I just came up to watch some Pug One videos there, his Pug One Life and THC there. Or One Pug Life, I should say Pug One Life, for sakes. And uh, I got to thinking about something that, uh, like, it's always cold everywhere else in the house but upstairs in the computer room. And the reason for that is obviously the computer room is filled with computers. They produce a lot of heat. Well, it gets to the point where it's so warm up there that I have to open a window, letting heat escape out the window, obviously. So this is what I was thinking about doing. Just taking one of these vents that goes upstairs, cutting it, zing, and then putting in an elbow aiming out with a vent so I can siphon all the heat from upstairs and blow it down here. I had a setup like that at my parents' house because my room was always super hot. And uh, what dad did was he went and he bought a blower van, a fan, blower van, nice. And he uh, stoved it in a piece of pipe like this, hooked it up to a toggle switch in my bedroom so that when it got too warm in there, I just flicked the switch for five minutes and that temperature dropped like from 35 to 25 degrees like instantly. What are you doing? She's been licking the freaking couch and putting dirty cat paw prints and clawing at it. But yeah, that's what I was thinking about doing for the um, the thing. Putting an exhaust fan in and blowing it all out and then uh, build a final wall around here. Like build like a uh, come out. Well, it's almost painted where it's going to come out. But have it come out to like where that stud is. Go across and then back in almost all the way and then go straight across like basically where that pipe is sticking out mind you that's getting redone because that's ridiculous that's this is just the um uh, this is just the uh the uh friggin air for the uh plumbing like your gas vent that's all that is but 
That needs to be redone because having 70 hundred bends in it, probably not to code. So, yeah, you know, that needs to get redone. Then we're going to build a false wall here and then uh, properly seal this in with an access for the water to turn off the showers hot and cold from the rear and do any maintenance if needed. That'll be there. We'll put like a sliding door or something. I don't know. We'll figure that out when time comes. Or just put in a screw-in panel that we can just undo the screws and pull the panel off. One of those. Doesn't have to be pro. Just has to look somewhat decent. And then we'll get this all cleaned out. And then this will look all right. And then what I may do later on is... Um, I've been thinking about with this floor. I've been thinking about dropping freaking floorboard on it. Seriously dropping some plywood and uh, going solid. And then that would, lay, that would raise the floor, of course, bring me closer to the ceiling. But it wouldn't be so creaky, probably. That's what I'm thinking. I'm probably wrong. But anyway, people, that's my vlog for today. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you think the uh, air vent idea is a good idea. It worked awesome at my dad's house, so it'd probably work awesome here. But, uh, yeah, and then I can, you know, blow the heat from upstairs back downstairs and circulate it. Maybe my furnace will come, off, uh, come on every two seconds. Just a thought. But uh, thanks for watching my videos. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, click the like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, stove them down below. And uh, people, that's all for today. So thanks for watching and keep on vlogging.